Not only am I about to show you how to play every single operator in Rainbow Six Siege, but I'm also going to reveal some of the most useful tips and tricks along the way. And who better to start with than Smoke? Smoke is one of the best operators in R6, and a lot of that is to do with his versatility and playmaking abilities. To maximize your abilities with Smoke though, you have to understand how to use both the Smokes and his shotgun at their full form. The first key thing you need to do with Smoke is use the shotgun to do the sight setups. Making vertical holes, rotates, and lines of sight around the sight is step one to gaining an advantage. Smoke's primary kill potential comes from playing in close range areas where you can use the pump to take out any overextending attackers. It doesn't stop there though. The smoke grenades themselves have a large variety of uses that are great for the unpredictability that can come in each round. You can use them to stall time on a specific entrance or deny plants, but the best way to use them in my opinion is aggressively to get kills. By throwing smokes at specific areas, you're able to block off attackers line of sight and the control that they have in order to create safety for yourself from that area or seal the distance to get up in their face with a shotgun. This gives you tons of power and by the time it's happening to the attackers, it's already too late for them. Mute is also a super powerful defender, but his utility isn't capitalized on as much as it could be, and most of the time he's just completely misplayed. With Mute being a one speed, it can be difficult to get the sight set up while also running all over the place putting down jammers, so finding the balance between the two is important. Mute thrives on what I like to call a mini roam. A mini roam refers to extending out beyond the sight, but having a safe path back to it. This covers more space, and it stops the attackers from being able to pressure the sight right away. Instead, they have to get first through this mini roam which is super lethal, especially with Mute. Placing most of your Mute Jammers on the various drone entrances to this mini roam ensures that you're not getting droned out, which allows you to play those close range angles with the shotgun and catch people by surprise if they're coming in without info. Standing in the jammer radius is also a great idea as it will jam Dokubi calls, blitz shield, and allow you to move during line scans. Mute Jammers can be used on reinforcements too, however his drone denial capabilities are the strongest of all the defenders, so it's usually best to just stick to that. If you're interested in learning more about mini roams and how to use this misinformation tactic to your advantage, go watch this video afterwards. Castle is next up with four bulletproof barricades and a great loadout to support them. Castle is the perfect operator to counter fast playstyles, bringing complex defenses and setups that can confuse the attackers. Castles are best used outside of the site or to make unique rotations that wouldn't be possible otherwise. Castling off entrances into the site can actually hurt your team though, as your roamers trying to get back to site will be blocked out. Ideally, you're using the castle barricades in combination with the secondary shotgun to hold a room or area located near or around the site for a specific reason. That includes holding the floor above the site to cover it using vertical holes and to contest the other team from breaching above it. Or you're holding around the site to prevent attackers from entering through that area as easily. Castle is a time staller and a utility waster, and if the attackers rush too quick, don't drone well enough, or take too much time, he can give your team a major advantage. Pulse is a fairly strong information operator, but if you're going to use him, you need to call out for your teammates. In the prep phase, you'll want to grab a lot of the reinforcements as you don't have any utility to place and his 3 speed makes it quick to get around. Pulse thrives underneath the site or common entrances with soft floors, allowing him to pulse out the attackers and see for them from below if they stand still. Because of the large amount of information his gadget can gather, it's very important that if you play pulse, you call out the attackers you see so your teammates know what's happening too. If you do decide to play him underneath a site like this, barricading doorways will give you info on any attackers trying to sneak up on you. Doc is one of the most simple operators in the game. The MP5 is a great weapon with low recoil and the stim pistols can heal anyone back up to full HP with a single shot. He also also has the Bailiff secondary shotgun, allowing you to spend the prep phase as Doc reinforcing and making rotate holes or popping some unique lines of sight during the round. He's definitely more useful in the lower ranks where the time to kill is longer, making your chance of survival in each gunfight much higher. When either you or a teammate takes damage, just use the stims to heal up. Most of the time you won't get through all three stims in a round, and that's fine, just use them when the opportunity comes. Doc does have an overheal ability with his stim however, so if you see the opportunity to get aggressive, it might be worthwhile to stim up first for that extra protection. Rook is even more simple than Doc. Just drop the armor plates and you're good to go. Now anyone on your team who grabs one will get an additional 20 HP for the round and have the ability to self-revive if they go down. With no secondary shotgun, his setup is extremely minimal, however you can use the revolver to make new lines of sight if needed. Rook's spawn peeking ability is top notch, being one of the only defenders with access to the 2.0 site. When you're down in man advantage, you can make the high risk play of jumping out of a window to sacrifice the Rook, which either gains your team a kill or leaves you an extra man down. Running the impact grenades allows for creative playmaking and the extra assistance against shield operators, while the proximity mines can bring extra information if you find your team is lacking it. He also has the newest secondary gadget, which can be used to set up long lines of sight that the defenders won't be able to drone out easily. Capcan is a very strong yet simple operator that can be played in multiple fashions thanks to the flexibility of his traps. You have five traps that each do 60 damage. Placing one trap on five separate doorways will give you a larger span of information.
information, while stacking two or three on a doorway will be more lethal on those areas. Three traps will guarantee to instantly kill anyone who walks through them, while two traps will down a two armor operator and bring a three armor operator to five HP. A nice trick you can do with Capcan is to barricade the doorway you're placing the traps on and then rip it down afterwards. The remaining edge of the barricade will slightly cover the traps, making them harder to spot and increase the likelihood that the attackers hit them. Try to avoid putting them on windows as they're super easy to see and aim for common doorways that the attackers typically come in through. The trap will go down at whatever height you're aimed at, so place them away from eye level by looking at the bottom of the door frame. Chanka is a fairly underwhelming operator in my opinion, but he has some neat tricks to make the best of them. His LMG is his best asset by far, as you can set up the bomb site extremely quickly, making rotate holes, lines of sight, and vertical angles faster than any other operator. It's also really great if you use it similar to Buck's skeleton key, where you shoot out soft walls on the fly to surprise attackers and shoot them in the back. In terms of his actual Shamiko launcher, it's best used over top of reinforcements to deny small areas like doorways. The reinforcement provides cover, and the small area denial will cover the space of the door frame. Be careful though, because a single fire from it will not do enough damage to kill someone on its own, meaning the attacker could walk through it to try and shoot you while you have your Shamika launcher out. Instead, you can use the flames in sequence to cover a much larger area, using it to retake staircases or make a longer chain of fire that's inescapable, but it's not very simple and the risk typically isn't worth the reward. In my opinion, smoke is just a much safer and stronger pick. Jaeger is another simple operator, you simply place down your utility in the prep phase and after that, you're nothing but a gun. The key to playing Jaeger in the best fashion is to place the ADSs in the best places. The best spots for his gadget is of course map and site dependent, but typically you'll want to place them in areas in and around the bomb site where there's other bulletproof utility that you want to protect or where defenders like to anchor. The goal of the ADSs is to either protect people or utility or both at the same time. When placing them, make sure to put them in spots where the attackers can't just shoot them, otherwise they will be completely useless. And if you want to avoid complete uselessness with bandit, it's fairly easy. All you have to do is place your bandit charges on reinforcements, especially the most common ones that are easily accessible to the attackers. Placing the bandits down is just the first phase of bandit gameplay though. To evolve into an elite bandit player, you'll want to learn and understand the depths and details of bandit tricking. Bandit tricking is when you place your battery on the wall as the hard breach gadget is being placed by the attackers to destroy it after it's been placed. That way they can't simply disable the pre-placed bandits and get the wall and you're destroying their utility in the process. It's a difficult skill to learn and it also requires having good audio to hear when the hard breach gadgets are being placed. A simple way around this is to just continuously pick up and place the battery over and over again. Maverick is the ultimate bandit counter though, so if you see the reinforcement being melted out in front of your face, run. Frost mats are a super strong trap utility that are best placed under windows that the attackers can't repel on. Under windows is ideal because they won't be able to shoot or see the mat until they hop in, forcing them to look down as they jump in or face the consequences. If they can repel on the window, they're able to upside down repel to shoot the mat and destroy it. If you can, try to keep the mats on windows close to the site because the added pressure of having defenders on site potentially watching the hop-ins will be the main priority of the attacker. In this case, it's easier for the attackers to forget about the mats and it's also easier for you as a defender to clean up the kills of the trapped attackers. Placing mats on staircases is also super strong though, because as they come up the stairs, they'll be looking up the stairs for potential threats, and not down at the platform where the frost mat is waiting for them. As an added trick, you can also place barbed wire on top of the frost mats to hide them even better. Valk is a very powerful operator, especially for experienced players. Placing Valk cams around the map gives you valuable information on where the attackers are coming from, which can give you the extra time to position yourself better and get the advantage. The more you play Valk, the better you'll get as you find new and unique camera spots to give maximum information while being as well hidden as possible. If you want to learn some good ones, go check out Coconut Bra on YouTube. Besides having insane spots, you can place Valk cams above any room with soft floors and use your Nitro cell from underneath for easy kills through the floor that the attackers won't see coming. If you're going to pick Valk though, make sure you're calling out to your team off of those cams to feed them valuable information. Cav is the sneakiest and quietest operator in Rainbow Six and she thrives against enemies with high aggression and low information. If you notice the other team doesn't drone very much, it means they're relying on their audio to gain information on defenders, and Cav works around that with her silent step. Finding the best hiding spots, making quick getaways silently, and being a complete rat is Cav's specialty, and that's how I would recommend playing her. She does have the unique interrogation ability which reveals all the enemy positions, but it's very risky and should only be performed when you know it's safe. It's better to take the kill and get out alive with it rather than being caught off in the middle of an interrogation and losing your life instead. Mira is an extremely powerful operator that drops one-way windows which are perfect for 
information and pre-firing enemies. Placing a mirror on a reinforcement with a soft wall next to it allows you to peek off of the mirror to pre-fire enemies on the other side using the soft wall. If you're playing mirror, try to set them up facing common lanes that the attackers use and sit behind it to use this pre-fire tactic. When in doubt, you're also able to shoot the bar underneath it to open the window. This allows you to use it as a peek hole from the opposite side. If the enemy is coming from behind, sometimes it's best to pop it open and use this tactic instead of waiting around to be shot in the back. The C4 is also a great tool that you can toss out from behind the mirror for an explosive start to the round. Echo is one of my favorite defenders with two controllable yokai drones that can disorient attackers and relay information. There's so many atypical ways to play Echo, but the easiest of them would be to anchor on site. During the prep phase, set up your yokai drones on various entrances to gain information on them. If you see attackers pushing from here, you can reposition yourself closer to the drone and when the time is right, stun them with the yokai, hop off of it, and swing them. The concussion will disorient both their audio and vision, giving you a major advantage. Using the yokai drones to drone your teammates around the map can be super strong if you have a good duo, but using them for yourself to gather information and make plays is a reliable strategy that will do wonders for you. And if you need a neat little echo trick for those desperate times, try out the echo spawn peak, where you set up a drone on one window and then using that information impact out of another window to take the attacker by complete surprise. To play lesion in the best way possible, it's pretty simple. Use your goo mines on staircases and doorways to increase the chances of them actually hitting. When an attacker is forced to walk through a narrow doorway or up a staircase, instead of having multiple routes through a wide open room, they have no choice but to take the path where your goo mine is hiding. Of course, if they do see it, they can shoot it, but that shot will also provide you with information on them. Legion is all about information, and to get as much of it as possible, don't stack all those goo mines on a single area, but instead spread them out across a variety of entrances so that you're not getting snuck up on. Legion's also equipped with one of the best defender SMGs, so if you're in need of a little more firepower, he's got you covered. And if you're feeling tricky, place a goo mine on the opposite side of a soft wall. When an attacker comes by and hits it, you can impact the wall out from the other side for the surprise of their life. To play Ella, tossing your goo mines around the site for common entrances works great. That way they're in high traffic areas, and when the attackers walk into them, they're also walking into multiple different angles that they could be getting shot from. Sometimes placing them slightly outside the site is better though, especially on the less common entrances. That way you can have information on those areas if an attacker is trying to sneak up there. Hiding them in floors or keeping one in your pocket to use on the go is not a terrible plan either. Ella is pretty basic, but there are some unique things to discover with her. Vigil has not been getting a lot of love in the current meta, but he does have some unique features that he's able to use. The first is drone hunting. In the prep phase or even during the round, you can continuously turn his scanner on and off to see if there's any drones nearby. If you get plus two points, there's a drone in the area and you can try to hunt it down. If you don't get any points at all, it means there's no drone on you, which allows you to make plays based off the fact that you know the attackers don't have any information on you. During the round, Vigil is best on the roam, using his gadget to confuse the enemies and keep his position inaccurate. He also has the impacts in his back pocket to escape through a soft wall once he's finally cornered. Vigil can single-handedly waste away all of the time in a round if the attackers keep trying to hunt him down, but if the other team doesn't use their drones very much, perhaps another roamer like Cav is a better option. Vigil has a unique ability to dodge lion scans though. When a lion scan is inbound, turn on the cloak and you're able to peek like a madman without getting pinged, and the attackers never see it coming. Maestro is a heavily underrated operator, but he is a complete beast. Equipped with two bulletproof cameras that can be opened up to zap both people and utility, along with an 80 round mag LMG, he's heavy hitting and brings a lot to the team. You'll want to try and set up your maestro bubbles in areas that give lots of information, but are also in safe enough spots that the attackers can't melee them easily. If they get meleeed, the glass will get broken and you won't be able to see out of them without actively opening the glass. This means your dead teammates can no longer use them for info and it's just not ideal. My favorite maestro trick is to hide the cams in areas that allow you to destroy hard breachers utility. Whether that's above a hatch or in a corner facing a reinforcement, this trick is super strong and can force attackers into uncomfortable gunfights. Something they probably don't want to do when an 80 round mag is on the other side to greet them. Alibi is Maestro's sister in arms with the lethal MX4 Storm SMG and some tricky prismas that can make all the difference. Alibi has a dominant history in R6 and she's still able to hang with the big dog operators. The key to Alibi is to place the prismas in areas that cover the base and are difficult to get rid of. Like frost mats, windows attackers can't repel on are ideal for this as they'll have to use other methods to get rid of it before hopping in or risk being pinged. Unless it's Knock who's immune to the 
Alibi Prismas when her gadget's active. Having the new observation blocker, Alibi can place her Prismas behind this gadget. When attackers drone, they won't see the Prisma behind the screen, and once they decide to face check it, they're more than likely going to shoot that Prisma thinking it's you. This gives you a prime opportunity to peek off of that info and go in for the kill. Or they'll hide back away to avoid being clapped, giving you the prime opportunity to replace that Prisma with yourself and wait for your moment to strike. Clash is a widely controversial operator, being the only shield op on the defense, but also one of the worst. Clash can be really good on a select few sites, but she shouldn't be picked all the time. To play Clash in the best way possible, you'll want to play in areas that force the attackers to push into you. Keep your distance though, because if you get too close, they'll melee your shield, swinging it to the side and leaving you vulnerable for a short period of time. A lot of Clash players will never switch to their secondary though, which is a big mistake. If you've gone down severely in man advantage, you have two options to have a chance at winning. Either you can keep your shield out and get aggressive on the attackers, calling for your other teammate to push and swing them as they're slowed by your shocks, or you can pull out the secondary SMG and get the job done yourself. If your shield is running low on power and things are looking grim, swap to the secondary SMG but hit a 180 spin while you do it so the attacker squaring you up empties his mag into the now on your back shield. This is then followed by you spinning around again to empty your mag into their no shield having face. This is surprisingly a very effective tactic. Moving on to a much less controversial and much less situational operator, we have Cade. Cade is good on practically every site, being able to electrify multiple walls or hatches. Placing your Cade down on reinforcements that the attackers are going to want to open and calling it a day is a good start, but to be even more effective with Cade, you can Cade trick. Cade tricking is similar to bandit tricking, except it makes it nearly impossible to open the wall without a thatcher. So if thatcher is banned, get Cade tricking. Maverick would also counter this, but literally nobody plays Maverick these days. To Cade trick properly, you need to use both electro claws to repeatedly throw down new claws in different spots. That way, if they use an EMP gadget on one, the other claw will become active and keep the wall electrified. Once one of them gets EMP'd, you pick it up and toss it down again in a new spot. As long as the claws get both panels, you're in the clear and that breach will stay closed. Again, Thatcher can ruin the party simply by throwing two EMP gadgets down back to back as the breacher gets the wall. If it's a Kali you're up against, make sure you pick up the claw when you hear it tank the wall so it doesn't get destroyed. Kali's lance will destroy the attacker's hard breach too, meaning they can't place their hard breach down until after it goes off either. This is a very complex and thorough series of transactions, but the more you practice, the better you'll get it down. The ideal way to play Mozzie may not be what you expect. Instead of using the pest to catch drones in the prep phase, spend the prep phase shooting any drones you find. That will take down the number of total drones the attackers have left, only for there to be three different pests around the map stopping even more of their drones. This is the best way to limit the attacker's information while playing Mozzie. The downside to this is that hacking a drone midway through the round, driving it out of the attacker's line of sight, and setting it up to use later in the round takes a lot of time, which can be unsafe if you're sitting there on cams driving the drone around with no idea what's going on around you. That's why I prefer to simply hide hacked drones in a nearby area once you've caught them, just to keep them as information for dead teammates or to move later on if it's safe to. Using hack drones to try and see four attackers through the floor is a fantastic strategy as it's low risk, high reward. So if the opportunity for that arises, definitely go for it. In terms of pest placements, you'll want to put them on platforms of staircases or single doorways where they block the drones from continuing on through that area. Drone holes are also ideal for this. Warden is a very popular operator thanks to his insanely strong loadout, including a no recoil MPX with a 1.5 sight, an SMG 12 secondary, and either a shield or C4, the two strongest secondary gadgets on the defense right now. He's also a safety net for flashbangs, ying, blitz, and smoke grenades, which are some of the most annoying utility in the game. Warden brings peace of mind to a defense, but if the other team isn't using that sort of utility, his ability is practically useless. To play Warden optimally, you don't want to stray too far away from the bomb site. You can extend out a bit to try and get some early picks, or even go for a spawn peek with that nasty gun, but when the dust settles in the early round, you'll want to be accessible to your team for any smoke or ying executes that come by surprise midway through the round. Warden is a ton of fun, and on top of that, he's well-dressed and runs like this. Eat cheese. And if you really want, you can use Smoke's canisters along with Warden's glasses for a handmade choke slam on the attackers. They can barely see through that smoke cloud, but your epic blue light gamer glasses sure can. Goyo is a great defender for wasting time and forcing the attackers to slow their roll. My favorite way to play Goyo is to barricade doorways on the roam and place Goyo canisters on said barricades. When attackers punch them or shoot them down, the fire will spill out, blocking their entrance through that doorway for 20 seconds. 20 seconds is a lot of time, allowing you to register where they are, think about what's clear and what's not, make a decision on what you want to do, and then do it. If they're willing to run through the flames, they will take a ton of damage and more than likely get fried with the lethal vector 1.5 that Goyo is equipped with. Some people like to place Goyos in areas that you can shoot them to activate at any time, but in my opinion, the barricade strategy is superior because it 
doesn't require you to interact with the gadget to get its full use each time. With the other method, if you don't shoot the Goyos at the right time, it might be too late and the attackers could just walk right past them. Well, my is another 1.5 sight haver with the MP5K being a top defender weapon for the defense right now. Well, my is a very flexible operator, which means you need a loose mindset and a California mentality to play him. Where are they pushing? Oh, over here? Okay, I'll come over there and throw some dicks for... dicks. <laughs> Discs for protection? Hell yeah, dude. Hope that helps. Throwing discs on the fly to protect players or utility is the best way to play Wamai. Because his discs charge up throughout the round, it's difficult to have a pre-planned idea of what you want to do with them all. It's more optimal to just feel it out and throw them down as they come so that you're not dying with them in your pocket. For that reason, it makes sense to play Wamai close to sight, so you're not getting picked off early on the roam, and you can actually get those discs down for your team. Oryx is the beefiest of all the operators, but somehow he's still only a two armor. During the prep phase, instead of smashing those rotate holes quickly, using the secondary bailiff shotgun will save yourself from taking drywall damage. During the round, smashing rotate holes on the fly can be super effective, or using the dash to cross dangerous lines of sight that the attackers have established. These dashes are quick, and it can be super tough to take down Oryx while he's doing it, so dash wisely into and out of cover for a good advantage. Dashing head on to people is not a great idea though. Oryx is primarily made for killing, so bring him on the roam, run around, head back to sight, and if you're still alive in the late round, you can jump up one of those hatches for a very surprising flank. Malusi is super basic, yet quite effective, especially against rushes and high aggression players. Place your Malusis on entrances to the bomb site, but try and tuck them around doorways when you do. This firstly hides them better so they're more difficult to spot out, especially if they don't drone, and secondly it makes it much harder to shoot them as an attacker. Because they're tucked around the corner, an attacker would have to walk out in the open in a vulnerable position and then turn around 180 degrees to be able to look back and shoot the Malusi wub. This is super hard to do when you have defenders swinging you off the sound of it. If you are playing Malusi, stay in areas around your wubs so that when you hear them, you can peek out and pre-fire the slow-moving, easy-to-take-down attacker. Aruni specializes in being the only cyborg of the R6 roster with a bionic arm perfect for smashing gaping holes. In the prep phase as Aruni, you'll want to help out with the site setup, but also place down those Surya gates in the ideal locations. What are the ideal locations for these, you may ask? Well, Surya gates are best place for protecting utility, so any doorway in front of a shield, bulletproof camera, or other piece of utility can be the perfect spot for a Surya gate. Windows are the best of all though, as a Surya gate will block off the entire window frame, stopping attackers from being able to drone through it without burning it first. The big window on Oregon is a prime example of this, since the attackers would have to drone all the way from the White Stairs drone hole as the nearest drone path. Aruni comes packing a punch with a DMR, which practically two shots everyone in the body, but her bionic abilities are also great for quietly making rotates mid-rounds for flank. Thunderbird, like Doc, brings healing capabilities for her team, and even the other team at times. To play her the right way, simply place your Konas around the site where your team can use them to heal up if they take damage. You can also keep one in your pocket if you're roaming to drop down on the fly and heal yourself up a small amount. The trick to Thunderbird is to get as many heals as you can for your team without letting the enemies get to them. So if you have to retreat or give up an area with the Kona station's place, try to destroy it first so the enemies aren't using it against you. With a fairly decent AR, you're able to run around the map and take gunfights, grab some heals afterwards, and then repeat the process. But honestly, I just prefer Doc much more, especially with the Thunderbird changes coming in the new season. To play Thorn the right way, you'll want to place them on chandeliers and objects where it activates as they walk into the radius instead of on walls or around corners. Because of the small activation delay, by placing them this way, they actually activate as the enemy is in the middle of the radius instead of already past it. This forces them to move a larger distance than they would if they were simply above a doorway or around a corner. Hiding them in common plant spots can also work really well. If you're a complete beast with Thorn though, you can use them aggressively at immobile attackers, like a planner, to catch them by surprise and potentially take them out. These traps work super well at the lower ranks because the average reaction times and game sense of the players are lower, but the more you rank up, the less effective they'll become. Azami is a super complex but super strong operator that has a variety of uses, playstyles, and abilities. There's pretty much never a bad time to pick her, which is why she is one of the top defenders in the game right now. You can use her to pop out cover on the fly or completely reshape the design of a defense, confusing attackers and giving you angles that wouldn't exist without her. Azami is at her strongest form when you use the Kiba barriers to block off lines of sight where they can't be meleeed by the attackers. That way the attackers have to use explosives or other utility to destroy them. Because she gets five different Kiba barriers over the course of the round, that's a lot of destruction that the other team needs to bring to deal with her. You can make some insane one-way angles where the attackers don't stand a chance, and if you really study her, you'll be able to take over the defenses. She's also equipped with the Desert Eagle, which is perfect for making lines of sight during the prep phase and setting up a good start to the round. If you want to learn more specific Azami strategies and study her a little further, I'd recommend watching a
Athena's video on her. I absolutely love Solas. I think she's one of the best additions to R6 and she really highlights the strength of information within the game. To play Solas in the best way you can, there's a five step process that consists of drone hunting, information and communication, clean flanking, countering drones and saving the plant. Or Dicks, for short. I talk about dicks in much more detail in this video here, but in general, you'll want to try and maximize every aspect of each step. In the prep phase, you'll want to hunt down drones. In the action phase, use your gadget to give information to your team or go for a flank knowing there's no information on you with the help of the gadget. Counter drones by walking around them or go for that wild run out if there's no claymore. And once the round gets to its final seconds, use that gadget to stop the plant and save the round. There's really so much packed into one operator, but the better the players you play, the better she becomes. I'd consider Solus to be a very advanced operator, so if you're new to the game, you might want to hold off on getting her. Fenrir is the newest operator in Rainbow Six Siege, and I think he's going to be very strong. There are a few different strategies you can use for Fenrir, but the most basic and reliable one of them is to place your FNAT dreadmines around the site as information. By extending the site out and having this information, you're able to react to where the attackers are pushing from. The main push is coming from one side of the objective, turn on the mines on the back side so you're not getting flanked on the execute. Or if you have a teammate watching the back, turn on the front side ones to blind the attackers as they push in. Now it's time for some tricks. As Fenrir, you can choose to keep a mine in your pocket to throw down once the pressure starts building up. That way you'll have it in the perfect location for the end of the round to blind the attackers on their execute. This way they also can't destroy it beforehand. It doesn't stop there though. Because you can actively see the mine through the wall, you're able to wall bang attackers that will walk into it if you place it in the right spot. You can even team up with a teammate by having a pre-play C4 below it that you can tell them to blow once the mine activates. As long as the area is on a soft floor, you're almost guaranteed a free kill. There's a lot Lot more to Fenrir and depending on when you're watching this video I might just have a full guide on my channel right now for even more on Fenrir but if not subscribe to stay tuned for that. Now we're going to move on to the attackers in order starting with Sledge. Sledge is a pinnacle of the Rainbow Six attackers having the iconic sledgehammer and one of the most well-rounded loadouts in the game but how do we actually play Sledge? Sledge is fairly straightforward at first but his levels of mastery only continue to grow. As a beginner player you can use Sledge for quick rotations between rooms, breaking defender utility like barbed wire and castles, and opening soft hatches. He's a very versatile op and whatever you see you can try to smash. He's equipped with grenades to destroy things at long ranges or to use them to gain kills. Either is fine, just make sure you actually use the grenades. They're the strongest secondary utility in the game right now. If you're already slightly more proficient with sledge and are comfortable with the map layouts, playing sledge vertically is lethal. Knowing the common spots on site where defenders play and opening holes above these spots makes it much more difficult to play there. But be careful, instead of peeking those holes right away, try to make all the holes first. That way if you die the holes are already open for your team to use. And as one final tactic, if you've got great information, you're able to throw a grenade at a soft floor and sledge the floor out from under it. This will work as a budget fuse charge, dropping the nade through the hole for it to explode on the other side. These kills don't come often, but when they do, it's extremely satisfying. Thatcher is still one of the most common bands in R6, and it all comes down to his simplicity. The most effective way to play Thatcher is to simply EMP electrified hatches or walls for your hard breach to open. If you're up against a Cade, you might want to EMP the wall twice, a few seconds apart, because if you you don't he'll be able to cade trick like I talked about earlier in the video and your hard breachers utility will get destroyed. If you find that you've got leftover EMPs in the round or just want to switch it up you can use the sound of the EMPs to mess with the defender's audio. Throwing one down as your teammate is planting will cover up the sound and could disable a C4 out of the air to save their life. You can also use them during a rush to disable any electronic traps on the entrance into the site. When in doubt EMP it out. The most common ash play style is sprinting into the building without droning trying to kill everyone and while this actually can work occasionally, I'd say there are much better ways to play her. Ash's utility brings a lot of destruction to the team, and playing her to destroy as many things as possible works great. Use her Ash Launcher to breach walls at range to create new lines of sight, or use it to take out defenders' bulletproof utility. Claymores can work well, but for sites that aren't on the top floor, you can use the breach charges like Sledge to open up areas above the site and add a ton of pressure. You can also trick the defenders by leaving a breach charge set up somewhere, and then rotate to a different area and blow it for the ultimate bait and switch distraction. Basically just using Ash's utility will instantly put you in the top 5% of Ash players. Thermite is the master of gaping holes, so let's blow some holes in the defense the right way. Opening main breaches that are safe and accessible is what you should be doing with Thermite. After that, you can drone out the site for your team and plant the bomb when the time is right. Thermite's best capabilities are in being the hard support of the team, doing whatever it takes and whatever is needed in order to win. If your teammate needs a drone early in the round, you're usually the one that should do it, so get in the selfless mentality if you're going to 
ground play therm. Because of this unusual status thermite carries, you'll also probably get blamed for everything too. Just remember that it's a team game, there's usually individual improvements to be made on a round to round basis, but it's never entirely your fault. Fox on locks has got your back thermite mains. With all that being said, sometimes you can't actually plant the bomb, which is when thermite's secondary utility comes into play. You can flashbang or smoke off one area and push into the other to take aggressive fights if you need to, and sometimes that is the best option. As one final trick with thermite, if an exterior wall is muted, you can actually avoid the mute by opening it from the rappel at the top of the wall. I recommend staying right side up while doing it in order to avoid having that vaultable ledge at the bottom. Twitch can be really strong, but she can also be a detriment if you don't play her right. To play Twitch, you'll want to try and take out as much utility as you can, including all the default cameras if possible. Taking out the defaults is much stronger than you think, as the defenders can no longer tell which areas are safe and which aren't. Having a default camera available tells the defender that that area is clear, and using the process of elimination, they can determine where the attackers are coming from. That's why using Twitch to get rid of that information can be extremely powerful. Throw in a couple ADSs or Alamines on top, and Twitch can do some significant damage with their drones alone. However, it is also very important to match the pace of your teammates. If you're in spawn, tasing default cameras, and your entire team is dead in sight, you've probably lost the round already. At that point, the default cameras aren't going to matter anyway, so make sure to stay close to your teammates and to get aggressive with them if they're getting active to avoid being the baiting boy in spawn that doesn't help the team. Montang is an information beast with a full-size big boy shield that protects him from the elements of the game, but even Monty has a few tricks up his sleeve. The standardized way to play Monty, especially if you trust your team, is to keep your shield extended at all times when you have man advantage or even numbers. That way you can relay information to your team, calling out what you see and add pressure to the defenders who are nearby you. If you die, that information and pressure is dead along with you. To scare them a little bit or just draw their attention towards you, you can unshield and then shield again right away to make them think that you're going to shoot at them. This is a perfect tactic to use when your teammate is right about to peek them. If you do lose man advantage, however, keeping your shield extended isn't going to get the job done, so drop that big boy down and try to get some kills back. Monty is actually pretty good in gunfights, having only a pistol of course, but also having a shield blocking the majority of his body. And to really surprise them, instead of ADSing, just hit your prone button and hit fire away. This is super annoying and essentially makes you a loser, but it works really well when you're in close proximity, so if you're willing to sacrifice your pride for the dub, then have at her. To play glass, never run grenades. Unless you have great teammates that are bringing a few sets of smoke grenades already, just yes. run smoke grenades yourself. Bringing grenades on glass makes his entire ability useless, so if you really want grenades, then just play literally any other operator with them so that you can have an additional ability on top. Now that you're set up the right way, let's talk about playing him the right way. The first way to play glass is to use your smoke grenades to cover the planter and get the bomb down. You can also use glass to peek extremely aggressively by hiding in the smoke grenade. You can walk in and around the smoke looking for highlight or yellow people, but don't move too quickly or your scope will deactivate and you won't be able to see. As a last result, when all else fails, just bait and spawn using this angle on border to cut the site in half and potentially get a kill or two. Again, just a complete sacrifice of your pride here. People got really mad at me for putting Fuse so low on my operator ranking, but the truth is that Fuse is a great op at pretty much every rank, except for the top one. But that's not what this video is about. To play Fuse, your primary focus is to destroy utility with kills coming as a kind of bonus feature. Working different windows, walls, and ceilings around the bomb site allows you to destroy bulletproof utility in the different areas. It will also push and move the defenders around, which is absolutely great if your teammates are already near the site to watch them as they squirm around. You can even place a few charge down and leave it there to blow later in the round as a distraction. Those cluster charges are also very loud, which is another thing you can use to your advantage when you're trying to plant the bomb or push the site. Blitz is next as a much more aggressive shield operator that brings terror and rage to the defending team. To play Blitz, you'll want to position yourself in areas that are close quarters with lots of cover. Coming through large open rooms is not ideal because not only will defenders have tons of time to chip away at your health, but they'll also have a variety of different angles on you to shoot you in the side or the back. Instead, try to stay in lanes where there's only a couple different angles on you at a time. That way you can position your shield to block the bullets and get up close to blind the defenders. When you initially see a defender, try to stay crouched until they've shot their mag away. Then when they're low on ammo or reloading, you can sprint at them to close the gap. My rule for blitz is to get up close, blind them, wait a second, and then ADS. That way you can take a moment to get beside them to significantly decrease the likelihood that their blind panic spray actually kills you. IQ play all comes down to when to pick her. If the enemies are running tons of traps or info operators like Valk and Echo, then IQ can be an amazing pick. Using your scanner, try to ping all the gadgets you can to see not only the location of them, but also to highlight the defender. For example, if you ping a Capcan trap, Capcan will get identified, and everyone on your team should know that 
that there's EDDs around the map and be a little more cautious. If you can make your way below or above the bomb site, you can use the scanner to destroy electronic gadgets through the soft floors. Running the suppressor on the pistol is recommended to make less noise while you're at it. The last use for IQ is to use her in combination with the secondary EMP gadget to open up external walls. Because IQ can see Cade Claws, Bandits, and Mutes, she'll know what utility is on the wall and where, allowing you to ping it and call out for your teammates to simplify the process. Buck is very similar to Sledge when it comes to soft breaching. Buck is great for making quick rotate holes or just blasting a hole in the wall to surprise an enemy. His breaching is much quicker than Sledge's, and because he can do it at a distance, it's much safer too. You can even buck from two floors above the site for additional safety. Unlike Sledge, he can breach from below the site, being a very versatile soft breacher. If you're playing Buck, try to open up new angles and unexpected areas to surprise the defenders and shape the map into your favor. The better your map knowledge and understanding of what walls and floors lead to where, the better you'll be with Buck. Blackbeard is one of the worst operators in the game, with his shield being very fragile, but he can also be super annoying at times. There is a right way and a wrong way to play Blackbeard, and if you're posted up on a rappel holding an angle, you're playing him wrong. To play Blackbeard as properly as you can, you'll want to get inside the building and play him as an entry. Being aggressive and swinging onto the defenders will make it harder for them to hit multiple headshots on you to destroy the shield and then kill you afterwards. When you're standing still, it's very easy to land multiple headshots in quick succession, but when your head's moving around as you swing and peek, it's much more difficult. Because he's so slow moving with the shield on, you can simply swap to the deagle to rotate across the map quicker and get to where you want to be. Capitao is a chaos operator, bringing heavy utility and big playmaking abilities that come with some risk. Chaos operators are operators that are ideal for creating chaos in order to plant the bomb, and Capitao is the first of them. The downside to Capitao is that pulling out the crossbow leaves you vulnerable to defenders swinging onto you, and occasionally you'll have to expose yourself when trying to place them in the right spots. However, if you can get the job done, they can be super lethal. Use Capitao's firebolts to push defenders back off of areas or stop them from being able to push through it, like when your team is going for a plant. You can even use the smokes on top of the firebolts to block the lines of sight at the same time. This makes for a sort of dangerous smoke grenade that's very strong. That, or you can use them on separate areas to cover more ground. The chaos of the smokes and the fire and potentially some shooting makes for a chaotic scene that is sure to get the defender's attention, whether it's a distraction or not. Happy Tao is definitely best when you have teammates working off his utility, but that doesn't mean you can't be proficient with him on your own. Despite bullet holes not showing you what's on the other side of them anymore, you can still shoot crossbow bolts through them, meaning you can fire off areas from the floor below. This allows you to set up plays for yourself and gives Capitao a lot of versatility. Habana is the most complex of all the hard breachers, and because I don't have time to explain every single niche detail on how it works, I'll just list off all the different ways to use your gadget for you to explore. As Habana, you're able to switch your pellets from 6 to 4 to 2, and there are a variety of uses for each of them. If you want to open a soft hatch, using 2 pellets will get the job done, but if it's reinforced, you're going to need 4. 4 pellets will also be enough to make a tiny rotate hole on a reinforcement, but if you want a more optimal one, you can do a 2 by 8 hole or even a 3 by 8 Opening lines of sight and reinforcements using multiple 2 pellet holes can be very strong, but then you're not able to get through it. Using 4 pellets at the top and bottom of a panel will make it soft, so if you have a teammate to open it like a sledge or a buck, you can make a much larger breach, which is sometimes much better. If you find there are no walls to get, you can even use the pellets on floors above or below the bomb site for some vertical play. One last trick with Obana is on Clubhouse, where you can destroy the cake claw on the kitchen hatch by placing two pellets beside the hatch on the floor in order to break it. After that, you can open up the hatch. Jackal has an Inox scanner that gives you pings on enemies after tracking down their footprints. The Inox scanner is interesting because not only can you scan enemies, but you can follow their footsteps around the map. Sometimes it actually can be better not to scan them, that way they aren't aware that you have information on them, allowing you to take them by surprise. However, most of the time the safer move is to simply track them. The Inox scanner can be turned on and off, and because of the static that comes up on your screen when you're being shot or in the range of a mute jammer, I recommend turning it off whenever you're not looking for feet or scanning footprints. The worst feeling is to lose a gunfight as Jackal because you couldn't see the enemy after you started getting shot. Positioning wise, you usually want to come in from the opposite side of the map from the bomb site, allowing you to track down roamers which are the hardest defenders to get information on. Most people are already assuming that there's players on site. That won't come as a surprise, but sometimes you're not sure if there's any roaming defenders on the other side of the map. Jackal also just allows some leeway for lazy droning from the attacking team. Ying is another chaos operator, creating a ton of noise, blinding everyone, and being extremely lethal if used at the right times. Warden is a hard counter to her, unfortunately, but if Warden's not in play, things are looking rough for the defenders. Ying's chaos strategy is to spam her candelas to blind as many areas as she can while the smokes cut off lines of sight. Blinding your teammates is bound to happen at some point, but it's totally fine if you're blinding the defenders at the same time. Because candelas activate quicker the longer they're cooked, you can hide around corners with fully cooked candelas to blind any defenders that come into your area. Being a rat 
out with an instant pop flash can be really disgusting and practically unstoppable if the defenders don't know you're there. Using the chaos of Ying to pull the defenders' attention and overload their audio as your team pushes from other directions is also very, very powerful. Zofia is next up, being a one-speed operator with some solid utility that has a variety of uses. Zof's impacts are great for destroying shields, bulletproof cameras, or making rotate holes similar to Ash. However, she also has the stun grenades on top. The stuns can be used to burn ADSs or Womidus before using the impacts so that they're not caught out by them. Or they can be used aggressively on defenders to stun them before engaging in a fight. If you're low on info and not sure if a room is clear, you can shoot in a concussive blast. If it explodes early, you know it activated off of the proximity of a defender and that there's someone in there. If it takes a few seconds to blow after bouncing around a bit, then the room is clear. If you end up in a position where you're covering a plant, use the stuns to concuss the defenders on site to disorient them and stop them from being able to hear the sound of the plant. To play Dokubi, don't send that late night you up text to the defenders, but instead call them up and moan in their ears. As Dokubi first and foremost, you'll want to hunt down roamers. Throwing out the initial room you want to enter from is ideal, and then use the calls to gain more and more control using your beautifully crafted eardrums. Once you've successfully claimed a victim of the defense, hack the cameras to gain access to all the information that the defenders have. Using those cams, you can then try to wall bang, floor bang, or just straight up swing other defenders you can find. Having this massive source of information is super powerful, which is why getting that initial kill and hacking those cams is so important. Lion players love calling in scans right off the start of the round for literally no reason. Don't do that! To play Lion, use your scans in combination with drones to gain map control or kill defenders. If you're droning out a room and see it's clear, instead of continuing to drone further and further, simply hop off the drone, call a scan, and push in. The scan will give you time to take the space without defenders sneaking in during the short amount of time, and gaining that control will allow you to stay closer behind your drone once you start droning again. Being in a better position will allow you to actually use your information from your drone to make plays. That's when using the scans to get kills is ideal. Having information on a defender and then calling a scan will freeze them in place while oh you or a teammate push so up and take them out. The better your teamwork here, the better Lion becomes, but he can still be very strong on his own. Pinka is a great beginner op because she's very simple. If your teammate loses health, pop a stim. If your team's about to make a big push, what pop a stim. Doing, teammate goes down, pop a stim. Really just using the stims is all you need to do, but if you want to add a little spice to your Finca gameplay, you can use her as a budget ying. Instead of the beta maneuver of flashbanging someone and then pushing them, push into your own flashbang. If you pop a stim before or during this, you'll wear off the effects of the flash quicker, however the defender will still be blind. This will allow you to see them before they can see you and take them out. It's fairly high risk, but when it works, it's epic. Wow, wow. Mav has been practically killed off by Ubisoft after losing his grenades, but he's still a 3-speed with a great weapon. You can elect to silently Mav holes and barricades and run through the map and let your nuts hang, but if you want to play him strategically, then using the blowtorch on reinforcements is going to be the key to that. Then after you're done, you can let your nuts hang in whichever way you choose. To make a panel soft for a teammate, blowtorch a line in the top and bottom of the reinforcement. This is a great way to get around any sort of wall denial, whether it's a bandit, cater, or mute, but it takes a lot longer than a regular hard breacher, and it's easier to get killed killed while doing it. Because you also need the help of a Sledge, Buck, Ash, Sophia, or other soft breach to open it afterwards, it adds another layer of teamwork that isn't guaranteed, so it isn't fully reliable. Nomad's ability thrives on flank watch and on runouts. Using the air jab on exterior doorways and windows is a great way to add safety to a rappel. If your teammate is clearing above the site to work vertical control, then placing them on the flanks will protect your soft breach as they do it. Adding in some extra cover with a drone is a nice touch too. If you're playing this flank watch style, it's important to play near your air jabs if you can, that way you can capitalize on the vulnerable defenders and get the kill once they get tossed to the ground by the air jab. If you don't have any spots to place air jabs or just have some left over, you can use them aggressively to launch defenders out of cover or just temporarily disable them as you push into the site. Maybe toss a few flashbangs into the mix and you've got a pretty lethal solo push going. I don't know about you, but I'm personally a bit of a gridlock hater. However, as a chaos operator, she can actually be pretty strong. Throwing down smokes and tracks not only stops the defenders from being able to walk through the smokes, but it also stops them from being able to see them while creating a ton of noise during their deployment. Outside of direct sight hits, you can use gridlock as sound cover for yourself, actually pushing up through them as they deploy, covering the sound of your footsteps. Plus, most people just aren't expecting this whatsoever, making for a surprise play that actually works. With Nomad being the superior flank watch operator, don't cave into the beta flank watch playstyle that gridlock is more commonly used for, but instead become a one speed thick bitch plowing her way through the map like she was made to do. Or plow your way sneakily and gracefully through the map using knock. Knock is a beast. Not 
not only does her ability make her a bit quieter, but it makes her invisible to default cameras. Nock is at her best sneaking up behind the defenders as her team pushes from another area. Chaos operators are the perfect complement to this style, and defenders are probably oh, more concerned about the plant going down during that time, so timing the flank properly is super important. Sneaking underneath the site early in the round and waiting there allows you to use her grenades through the floor to take out the anchoring defenders when the time is right, or catch roamers on the rotate. Nock can be difficult to learn and get good with, but she can single-handedly take down defenses. Amaru is high risk, high reward. As Amaru, try to set a drone up in prep phase of where you're planning to go in from. Using the super Spider-Man ability, you should establish map control as quickly as possible to surprise defenders who are rotating throughout the map early in the round. The LMG is great and the shotgun is too, however, Amaru does come with a dark side. Because of the high risk entry style play, she can get picked off super early, leaving the team in a 4v5. Starting out a man down is really not good for your team, so remember sometimes it's best to be safe rather than sorry. Plus, staying alive later in the round allows for some great Amaru plays that typically don't happen, like flying up a hatch on the backside. Kali is never a necessary op in my opinion, but using her ability can work. You want to use Kali's lance to destroy wall denial or any equipment that's near and around reinforced walls. The lance has a large range, so hitting the wall or doorway beside any destructible utility will destroy it. The sniper is a very high risk weapon at medium to close range. If you don't have any cover and you miss, you're most likely completely screwed. Half the time the bullet either doesn't work or they have rook armor on, allowing them to simply tank the bullet and kill you. The safest plan of attack for Kali though is to use her secondary SMG when you're basically anywhere inside the map and then the sniper at those long exterior ranges. Or just play Yana. Yana is the best attacker in the game right now. She's useful on any site, brings a plethora of information, has deadly weapons, and a set of grenades to top it off. Using the clones is the first step to being proficient with Yana, whether it's to burn a rooney gates or gather info. The clones move much quicker than drones, so when you need to clear a room, it's usually the better option of the two. Cloning in your teammates to follow up behind it works great, but don't be afraid to get in on the action yourself. The nades are the perfect complement to her abilities, allowing you to grenade defenders off the information you gain from the clones. It's really important to be cloning from safe areas, and no Knowing what's nearby oh is the key to this. If you start to clone without knowing what's right around the corner, you might get swung while stuck in the animation. When in doubt, just back up a little further and find some cover before cloning so you have the time to get off of it if you need to. Ace is a complex operator that appears quite simple on the outside. If you don't have a thermite, you'll want to open those main breaches. It's usually camera. ideal in this situation to do two ace holes, one above the other, in order to be able to walk through the breach instead of around, being forced to vault it. Sometimes you can even get the wall denial off yourself <laughs> using a drone. The aces are most <laughs> ideal at range, however however, being able to open walls that Thermite can't get to establish semi-gaping holes in powerful lines of sight. Ace is the fastest hard breacher too, meaning he can get around Bandit tricking by acing both sides of the wall after an EMP. Bandit might get one of the Ace charges, but it will be nearly impossible for him to get both. Zero is a great op, especially on Chalet and Bank, being able to establish information on massive areas very quickly using his unique gadget. To play Zero, set up your cams in an area you can lock down. Having a plethora of info allows you to act on what you see and push in safely if ever everything is clear. The cams can be used through reinforcements, floors, and ceilings on site to try and tase open mirror windows or traps, but the real power of the lasers are taking out those default cameras, similar to Twitch. He also has a GON6 and hard breach tools, allowing him to open up hatches and destroy a piece of utility if needed. Flores is truly the best operator for destroying utility though, with the downside being that he takes a lot of time to do it, and sometimes you need to keep the pace of your team like I mentioned earlier with Twitch. But he can even do that too, thanks to his S-tier Rotero drone baiting skills. As Flores, you can place down a Rotero drone and drive it in the direction you want and then hop off of it to follow up behind it. The defenders might run away from it or try to shoot it and as they do that you can be there to shoot them. Most of the time simply destroying a powerful shield or some barbed wire is good enough but this works great especially in clutch situations. Osa is one of the most frustrating operators to play against as a defender when you don't have explosives to break her shield. Right from the start of the round you can pull out the shield to safely make it to the building without being spawn killed. Once you're there getting into a position to establish powerful lines of sight with the shields is a great way to limit the defender's movement. If they move too much or get overly aggressive, you can pop your head over the shield to take them out. He has two great weapons between the 5.56 and the PDW, so use whichever one you prefer. Placing the shields on windows is practically useless as you can't peek off of them and the defenders can melee them super easily and safely. My biggest recommendation with Osa though is to only use her once per game, as the defenders usually start bringing more impacts the following rounds, knowing that you're playing the Osa. Sense is another chaos operator, great in combination with Glass to 
to obscure the defender's vision and provide cover for a plant. Sense is also great for just tossing light walls everywhere into sight for literally no reason except to confuse the defenders. Again, this works great if you do it on one side of the site while your team plants on the other. The walls are kind of like advanced smoke grenades, except they can be destroyed by impacts wow. in C4. To play Sense in a more solo, epic gamer fashion, you can use the walls to cut off lines of sight in order to make your way into different positions. This will catch defenders off guard and can lead to some Hello. decent plays and kills. Sense's gun has got a pretty decent upgrade since their release, so don't be afraid to get in on the action or even push through the wall aggressively. I do think Sense is a little under power right now. I'd love for Ubisoft to give Sense four or five of these gadgets, but let me know what you think in the comments. With a grim rework coming in the new season, he's actually able to keep up with the other operators now. To play grim, use the bees to block off areas like you would with Capitao and then get aggressive on the other areas. Using the bees to isolate gunfights in this way is super strong thanks to the commando, which literally shreds people. You can also use Grimm as another chaos operator during a plant or similar to Zofia and her stuns, shooting the bees at an area to see if it's clear. With the addition of the bailiff, you can make holes for yourself in floors or walls to shoot bees more safely or more creatively, and I'm excited to see how Grimm performs in the coming season. Because Brava is another drone or operator, the same applies as with Twitch and Flores. Sometimes it's better to get off the drones and get active with the team. With that out of the way, let's talk about how to use those drones to the best of their ability. As Brava, you only have three hacks per drone, so you'll want to prioritize Echo and Maestro cams as they're the most useful gadgets to take over. After that, any traps and Aruni gates are great, and then ADSs or Wamidas. Your Clutch drone needs to remain within range of the gadget until it's finished hacking, however, so once you start the initial hack, tuck the drone away within proximity of the device to keep it safe. If you leave it out in the open during the hack period, it increases the likelihood that it'll be shot. Droning out the site you're going to plant on and hacking everything that you can there will lay a path for your team to plant and even help out in the post plant when the defenders are trying to retake on their own utility. So that's how to play every operator in the game, but if you want to know the best strategy with each and every one of them, you can go watch this video where I go over the strongest game plan with every op. Leave a like, subscribe, and have an awesome day.